What is up, guys? Climax Combo here. I'm Licious Kid. I'm Checkers. And today we are doing a top 10 for the new JoJo set. This JoJo set comes in two different boosters, which is kind of weird. One for part three and one for part six. Since they came out the same day, and I believe you can run the two sets together because they're just uh, serial numbers, just JJ. Uh huh. Uh, we just decided to take one list for the two sets. I think both sets are 60 cards each. So you add them together. You get a slightly bigger set. Still smaller than Hollow Live and Momusume on release. So we just kind of consider them one set. The whole set's uh, stand user and stand. So there's really no Miss Synergies behind it. Uh -huh. They both share yellow. So they might as well be one set. Yep. This set is super cool. Super flavorful. And... It's very fitting of JoJo, just very weird effects. Yep. And some very crazy off the balls off the walls effect too. Mm -hmm. So this set just seems like a lot of fun. I yeah. think they did a lot better with this set than part five. Mm. Um, this this set just seems way more cooler and way more flavorful. Just more like JoJo esque. Just yeah. Weird, strong, and cool. Mm hmm. And just a quick, I guess, spoiler warning if you made it this far. And you haven't for some reason watched JoJo yet. Uh, gives away a lot of the plot <laughs> in kind of what happens with all these cards. Very flavorful. Yeah, it's a little too flavorful. So, so if you still haven't watched it, don't 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 don't, uh, don't listen to us. For yeah, me. come Just, back later. Yeah, come back later, and then you will appreciate the set for what it uh -huh. is. And like always, guys, these are our top ten favorite cards. Not always the strongest cards. Um, we try to mix the list with fun cards and powerful cards. In it, for the very first card, we have. 2-1 Jotaro. This guy is pretty cool. 6-5 power. When he's played from hand to stage, you choose up to two of your characters. This turn, they gain the following ability of when this is reversed. If the battle opponent's level is higher than your opponent's level, you may reverse that character. So he's in the, he is an Adachi, but he gives it to two of your characters. That's crazy. That is pretty cool, you know, with uh, against a standby deck. it's I think it's pretty legit. Mm-hmm. And how easy these new level threes that come out early are now can also have value there. So I think uh, teching one, if you're running red, might be pretty good. For number nine, we have level zero Emporio. Uh, his first effect at the start of your opponent's attack phase, you can discard a card to choose one of your opponent, for one of your other characters and this card, send them both to memory. And then at the start of your next draw phase, place those characters in in memory onto your stage in separate slots. And the second effect is uh, you can rest him uh, as long as you have another character with experience and then choose one card in your level zone and one in your waiting room and swap them. Uh, second effect is useful for experience builds, but the first effect is really why he's our number nine. It's a pretty cool effect to save two of your characters. Usually you pay one clock to bounce, you know, character or another character back to your hand. This one, you just have to ditch to send two to memory. Uh, you're pretty much taking two extra damage, kind of, but, you know, for these types of decks, or for types of decks that want to save resources in the beginning, it's a pretty nifty card. And for number eight, we have a pair of cards because they synergize together clearly. So first we'll go over uh, this 3-2 Jolene. She's 9k power. If you have three or more characters, she gets plus 2k. When this plays on hand to stage or by the effect of the other 3-2 Jolene, you may heal one. Climax combo. At the end of this card's attack, if you have the pants in your climax area and you have experience six, you can pay one, ditch two. If you do, deal four damage to your opponent and the character in front of it is reversed. You deal an extra one. Dang. Pretty scary. The other Jolene does help accomplish this. She is 3-2, 4k. She's a 2k in front assist. When she's played from hand to stage, you can pay one. If you do, you can bring out that Jolene from your waiting room and place it onto any slot on the stage. Also, has experience six. When she's playing from hand to stage with experience six, you choose one character your opponent's waiting room and place it on any slot on your opponent's stage. So pretty cool. Um, I mean, pretty obvious synergy. The assist makes the three two Jolene stronger. Bring something out. Of course, usually something weak. Kill over their big thing or the strong thing, and then you kill the weak thing, and then you get big benefits for a Jolene combo. Combo is pretty devastating, huh? It doesn't have to be on an empty slot? No. Wow. Oh, no, empty slot. Empty slot, you're right, oh, you're right. Okay. Boop, 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 boop. Okay. okay. I was like, for a second, I was like, wait, that's kind of sick. Well, if they don't have an empty slot, I guess it kind of sucks. <laughs> but you're not, you're not paying anything extra. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, I mean, still 2k power. Pretty, I don't know. Jolene's pretty good. 
they do ditch one, deal four, and then they deal one. So it's like three attack, her attack, four, and then one. Yeah, some good amount of damage. Mm -hmm. And if you even don't manage to kill something, it's still pretty strong. Um, still four damage. Kind of heavy if you don't kill something. Mm -hmm. Seeing how it's like Yoru is kind of the same effect. You just pay one, but still pretty cool, I think. Yeah. For our number seven, we have level zero White Snake, 500 base. Uh, when this is placed from stage on stage from hand, choose one of your opponent's characters and one of its traits. Send all markers underneath that character to the waiting room, and this turn that character loses that trait. Second effect is uh, Doki Tema. <laughs> uh, when this is placed on stage from hand, you may pay cost, which is discard a card, uh, reveal a top card, and then choose a character from your waiting room whose level is equal to or lower than the revealed card and add, a, add it to your hand. Uh, so really great effect the second one uh, super good and the first effect is actually pretty useful it's good that it's not just one or the other it's you get rid of all markers and you also can get rid of one of their traits like white snake does pretty cool um so yeah this can be uh useful against a lot of decks i would say because everything you kind of uses traits and stuff in some way mm -hmm. so if you pay attention if you know uh, a card's if you're requirements. With the matchup, yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. It can be pretty cool. I think an easy example is like Mushoku Tensei, the 2 2 girl that gives 1k character to all that trait. Mm -hmm. If you play White Snake, that one character doesn't have the trait and so yep. it doesn't get buffed. So, something like a simple example like that. Yeah, some um, cards that like all, all, if all your characters are this or X, or if you have like two or more characters gets plus 10k or plus 2k mm -hmm. there's a ton of you stuff you play four white snakes and they all don't have a trade <laughs> boom easy money so yeah it helps that that it's on a broken effect so yeah if it wasn't sick. on a broken effect yeah. <laughs> it kind of sucked but because it is it's op mm -hmm. also destroys the new inheritance mechanic what's going on bushi dude Getting rid of the markers Inheritance. on Uma Musume? Come on. Spy family change? Oh, oh, oh. Gets rid of that too. Bushi's just destroying the last two sets they made. What's going on? Yeah. Next up for our number six, we have Iggy and Zafool. The Fool. Whatever. 9,500 base. Uh, if this is in your front row, all of your stand user or stand characters get 1,500 power. When this attacks, you can pay two, discard two to deal two damage to your opponent. And he has hand on core. A uh, really sick card for standby. Um, just, you know, that 1500 pump uh, is great. And on top of that, he ha himself has hand on core and can burn your opponent if you so choose. Overall, it's a very loaded level three and a very cool card. Very loaded. He also buffs himself, which is makes it extra mm -hmm. insane. So 11k base. This guy, I mean, Iggy's. Pretty broken. Why? Why is Iggy so good? Because he was that. He he, he did pull through in the end, so <laughs> I guess he deserves a strong card. <laughs> Iggy was sick. For our number five, we have Big Daddy Dio himself. Three two nine K. He has three effects. First effect during your turn, he gets plus two K. Second effect when he's played from hand, you stay heal. Last effect at the start of your encore phase, if you have the choice in your climax area, and he's in the front row, and all your character opponent's characters are either. There are no characters in the front row, or all of them are in reverse. You can pay two, ditch two. If you do, your opponent sends the top two cards of your deck to the clock. So the payoff for the combo is pretty crazy. Guaranteed two damage. Damn. I know. But there's a few hoops you have to get through. You got to kill everything they own. And after that, the heavy cost is quite heavy. But the payoff is there for sure. And he is essentially 11k based on your turn. So with the proper assist and the situation, mm -hmm. think he can be legit. Uh, we are thinking standby is going to be a pretty good climax to run in this set. Mm -hmm. And using it with Dio might be cool because he costs a lot for his effect. So if you can standby, cheat a couple out, and then you'll be ready. Mm -hmm. So overall, saves on hand. Mm -hmm, Dio's a pretty sick card. Another sick card, possibly the most powerful card in the set. Yeah. This is 0 0 Kakyoin. This is kind of why we think standby is going to be good. It's because of him. He's got two powerful effects. When a climax is placed on your climax area, you can clock yourself one damage. If you do, look at top four cards of your deck. 
Choose one level one or higher card amongst it. Show it to your opponent. Add it to your hands. So the rest of the waiting room. Other effect at the start of your attack phase. Um, when you play that specific standby, you can pay cost, which is killing off that standby. If you do, choose one of your choose one character on your field and stand it. So Dang. that climax combo is pretty nutty because you just bounce them back, and the character you stand by out can attack immediately, which we've seen before and hasn't had much success. But we think that effect on top of his first effect mm -hmm. is what makes him crazy. Mm -hmm. That first effect is really good because he can work with any climax, so it doesn't have to be a specific standby. Mm -hmm. And just both effects are very powerful on one card. Mm -hmm. This card's nuts. It's like having two climax combos <laughs> on one card, so uh, Calculene's uh, pretty overloaded. Yeah. The strongest character in part three, I guess. <laughs> I know, right? Dio and Jotaro is a joke. Kakuin should have been the main villain. <laughs> All right. Next, we have three cards. <laughs> That's our number three. Um, because they work together and they're the kind of the whole point. Uh, or they, they, you need all three to kind of make the dream work. We'll start with the green baby. <laughs> um, so sick. Uh, when it's placed on stage from hand, you may pay cost, which is discard a card and then search for a 1-1 one, one Poochie. Show it to your opponent, add it to your hand, and then shuffle your deck. Uh, second effect, you just rest it to give one of your characters plus 1500 power. Pretty whatever, but the main star of the show is this 1-1 one, one Poochie. Uh, he's 1k power. He has zero soul. Uh, when this is placed on stage from hand, choose up to two 2-2 two, two Seamoon from your waiting room and put them on the bottom of your deck in any order. And the second effect is fusion. Put one green baby on stage, I assume, underneath this card face up as a marker. Search your deck for one two two C moon. Place it on stage in this card slot. And then put this card and all markers underneath it, underneath that two two C moon, face up as markers in any order. And that C moon is two two seven K base. If all your characters are stand user or stand, this gets plus three K power. And when this card reverses something, you can pay one if he has a marker underneath, and then choose one character in your waiting room and add it to hand. So this, uh, a, a lot of setup, a couple pieces needed, but it's relatively easy, I would say. Um, and the dream is to kind of bring out this 2-2 attacker for essentially free if you stand by the 1-1 one, one Pucci out at level zero, play a green baby, then use them to get a 2-2 Seamoon from your deck, and you have a 2-2 at level 0 or right at level 1 that can start reversing and plussing you when it kills stuff. It's pretty cool. 10k base. Honestly, the, it's, so, it's a lot, really flavorful, and uh, Green Baby and Poochie working together to, to become Seamoon. It's so cool. <laughs> it's so it's sick. So sick. <laughs> it, it's, for, the, it's pretty cool. The payoff is pretty decent, too. It's fucking sick. It's pretty sick. For our number two, we have another Climax combo. Jotaro and Star Platinum. 10k base. Uh, when this is placed on stage from hand, you can pay cost, which is send one of your other stand user or stand characters from your stage to waiting room. And then you can heal one, uh, or stock heal. And then the second effect is Climax Combo. At the start of your attack phase, if you have the door Climax in your Climax area and you have no other characters in your front row, this turn, this gets 11k power and the following ability. Uh, at the end of this card's attack, you can discard two copies of this same Jotaro and Star Platinum and four cards, other cards. And if you do, deal one damage to your opponent seven times and then deal seven damage to your opponent. This card is super tight and crazy. Uh, ora, ora, ora. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> you, you take seven oras and then you take the big fat ora at the end. Yeah, dude. Oh my god. 21k on attack? Is 22k with the gate. Oh my god. Oh, if He helps sack your board. Mm -hmm. Ooh. So you only have to play... Oh my god. So sick. That's a lot of damage. If you if this goes off, your opponent's dead. But you did discard your whole hand. 
Because yeah. you need seven. You need two more of him in your hand, and you then need, four. You more need cards. one of him, two more of him, four. You need eight cards in hand. It's like the dream. Oh my god! Because you gotta play him. That's one. You gotta ditch two. That's three. Ditch four. That's seven. And then the gate. That's eight. You can't <laughs> even end your turn with all the pieces for this. <laughs> well, I guess technically you can because you clock yourself. Because last four cards doesn't matter. Uh -huh. But still, there's there's so much setup for this. Yeah. But it's so sick, dude. If you get him off. You can't even be mad that you lost to this. It's fucking tight. It's so cool. It's very flavorful. I wish there was a backup. At least I don't remember. I don't remember a back row card in the set that allows, like, um, no backups. Because uh, no. you can just back up against him, and then you're sad. You, you know. Yeah. Yeah, you're super sad. So I'm the side. Yeah, you can't do that to your opponent. You, you, they're gonna, they have to let it go through. Oh, I guess you can side, huh? Yeah. It's at the end of his attack. But what if you're against Hall Alive and then you can side attack? Ooh. Ooh. Get on. Hall Alive busted. <laughs> Overall, though, this is a very flavorful and very cool card. On to some honorable mentions. These next few cards are just more flavorful. Uh, first up, we got the these three cards. Uh, if you know the anime, you know Darby, and he was all about gambling. So these three cards kind of reflect that from the anime. They all have a bet your soul game mechanic it's pretty hilarious you when you play the dark all of them are pretty different in how they achieve it but pretty much you like play a little mini game when you play them and then it's called the text is called bet your soul game just like the anime they bet their souls to gamble kind of like Yu-Gi-Oh in the shadow game which is hilarious so now you can have a real shadow game that's not in Yu-Gi-Oh but um they're definitely not worth it the payoff for doing them is not that good, and the downside of it is really bad for your you. So, just they're just really fun cards. To me personally, I thought the Darby part with the gambling was my favorite part in part three. So, mm. extra, you know, it means more. I like it a little more because of that. But Dang. they're just fun. They're cool. Um, just you know, very fitting of JoJo. Want to see more of this in future sets? Just like harmless fun cards, which we don't really see much in white shorts anymore. You know. Yeah. Or at all. I guess never really. I mean, I felt like some older sets had it, but just, you know, it's cool to see it. Much much like our last honorable mention, we have another pretty fun card. Mira Shon 2-1, 1K based. A lot of text. Uh, when this is placed on stage from hand, your opponent declares top or bottom. Then your opponent mills one. And if that card is level zero or lower, and your opponent declares top or... If the, if the card was level 1 or higher and your opponent declares bottom, then your opponent put the, puts the top card of their stock to waiting room. If that card is level 0 or lower and your opponent declared bottom, or if it was level 1 <laughs> or higher and your opponent declares top, your opponent may put the top card of their deck to stock. Uh, and the second effect, uh, you can rest two of your characters and then all your characters this turn get plus one soul. Busted. Dude, low key that second effect is good. <laughs> <laughs> low key that second effect is Looking good. Tight. But that first effect is so stupid. This first, this first effect is crazy. <laughs> it's hard to uh, probably from hearing it, it's kind of hard to understand what it does. But uh, essentially, your opponent is calling something, and if they called wrong, they lose a stock, um, or they gain a stock if they got it right. If they it's lose a stock, it it's pretty crazy. Yeah. It's yeah. pretty crazy. Making your opponent lose a stock is so sick, actually. Like, where do we ever see that? On play, your opponent loses one stock. That's crazy broken. <laughs> and her second effect is legit. So, so tight. <laughs> if you're really feeling really spicy, you can try this. Yeah. But I don't think this plus one soul to all... Plus, give all your characters plus one soul is always good. But I don't think it really fits in the play style for JoJo. Yeah. So... Maybe if it was in another set, it'd be kind of better. But <laughs> it's in this set, I don't think you're really going to be that aggressive. But it's a cool-ass card. There he is. And lastly, for our honorable mentions, we have Polnareff and Silver Chariot. 2,500 base. At the start of your attack phase, until the end of your opponent's turn, you may have this card gain get minus 1k power. If you do, until the end of your opponent's next turn, this gains the following ability. At the start of your opponent's attack phase, you may move this to an empty front row slot. Uh, pretty neat card, and it's cool. Polar F is cool. Gets a bunch of fast silver chariots. Very flavorful. Mirror image. I'm pretty decent. Yeah, he 
can sack some armor to get faster. It's pretty sick. Uh, I think the card is okay. 2,500 base is cool uh, to kill stuff on your turn. Yeah, 25 base on your um, turn and then 15 runner. Yeah, it's not bad. Have it be a runner in the open mm -hmm. opener. It's pretty sick. Pretty cool card. I don't know. Just wanted to mention it because it's cool. And Ooh. for the number one card in JoJo for us is 3 2 Made in Heaven. So sick. This card is too crazy. It's got one line of text. <laughs> At the start of your encore step, if he's in your front row and you have that choice cl climax, you can pay eight <laughs> and discard four cards and kill off the choice. If you do, you take an extra turn. Crazy. Probably, I think this is a first ever in Wise taking an extra turn. Let's go. And I mean, I think low key it is doable. Yeah. It's at the start of your encore phase, which is like the insane part. And discarding four is like not that hard. If you're gonna go for this, you're just gonna play one made in heaven, play two junk cards, or just move your whole back row up, attack. It's and then we're as we were talking about with standby with the deal concept, you could kind of use it with made in heaven, stand by him in the back. Mm -hmm. You run it with the sea moon mm -hmm. lineup, get the two twos out at level zero. You don't need to play stock anymore. Yep. And now you got 20 stock when you're level three. You play one, three made in heavens for BM. <laughs> and then it's game over. If you think about it, he 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 can survive. So you you only need like 10 stock. Wait. I saw a graphic. Let me think. So for the last turn, you, you only, only need you only seven need seven stock. stock, right? Yeah, it's because you play the two pay two for made in heaven, you attack, attack, attack. That's eight. Uh-huh. But then it's your turn again. Yes. You're going to get three more. Yes. So to get that, you need five more stock. But your Maiden in Heaven lives. So you can use the same Maiden in Heaven to do the combo again. Yes. I do think it's possible to get two Maiden in Heavens off too. Uh -huh. Especially if you trigger some choice triggers along the line. One card gives you three extra attacks. That's busted. That's so tight. And then like to draw, if you take an extra turn, you could clock, draw more cards. Yep. You know, brainstorm. Uh -huh. I don't know. Do something. But... Huh. I do I do think getting off one made in heaven is not impossible. I think the Joe title is harder than this. Yeah. But the is the payoff better than this? I don't know. Uh, well, you know, your opponent can just back up against Joe Title and they cry. You can't do anything about this. Yeah, even yeah. if he dies, you can still get your extra turn. They have to use like the two one memory backups to uh -huh. stop him. But if they don't have that, it's lights out. Your opponent you're taking an extra turn. <laughs> <laughs> which is just so tired it's so time. crazy tired like oh my god it's so sick this is truly number one material it's here. very fitting for jojo like this <laughs> <laughs> just crazy over the top stupid effects that uh, this one's actually kind of cool though like uh, i think you can actually do it though sick as fuck mm-hmm Imagine you could take two turns and you still can kill them. So sad. Yeah. <laughs> Which might be possible. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. It's but... hard to play. Maybe you have your C moves. That's about <laughs> that's it. That's about it. Yeah. But maybe you could like throw in enough. an Iggy in there, you know? Because you're playing standby yeah. with this probably. Oh, that's true. So you, you know, slap an Iggy. Yeah. If you get any standby triggers mm -hmm. when he's fighting, dude, oh, you have a good attacker for the next turn? Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is tight. It is cool. Yeah, yeah. It's a real thing. Fuck. But yeah, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. This is another top 10 featuring JoJo. Um, yeah, let us know what your favorite cards are. What your favorite JoJo part is, huh? How about that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Let's get some JoJo discussion. People love talking about JoJo. Yeah. What's your favorite JoJo meme? And uh, uh -huh. your favorite... Uh... Who's your favorite JoJo? Who's your favorite villain? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Let's go. My favorite villain is probably Kira from Park 4 still. Mm, I agree. Oh, okay. Very Kira cool. Is sick as fuck. My favorite Joe Star. <laughs> George Joe Star. Who? George Joe Star. <laughs> George Joe Star. Who's that? Is that part seven? No, he's just like. I think he was Joseph's dad or something or grandpa. He was technically a Joe Star, but they had him just get killed. Did he off. get killed off in the plane? Yeah, oh my god. So <laughs> That's tight. Probably Jos. Nah, is it Josuke? Jornal's pretty cool. Jornal so is pretty cool. Maybe Jornal. Dang, that's right. That's it for this, guys. 
Hope you guys liked it. And we'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.